and welcome, I'm your code monkey. So here's some Unity news, there's a pricing change. It's a bit complex, so there's already a ton of confusion and unanswered questions. I'm going to try my best to answer them based on how I understand things. Basically, the TLDR is if you are an indie dev like me making PC or console games, then probably nothing is really changing. In mobile, the math might be different. I'm not familiar with the mobile world, so I really cannot comment on how this change affects mobile. But for PC and console devs, this likely means no difference. So here's the full announcement blog post. Basically, starting from next year, Unity will introduce a new Unity runtime fee that is based on game installs. Here it mentions the Unity runtime several times. Basically, the Unity runtime is what actually runs the Unity game. So you have the Unity editor, that is where you actually make your game, then you make a build. When you run that build executable, that is the Unity runtime. Basically, this new fee will apply when above the thresholds for both revenue and installs. Now this hand over here, this one is very important. This is one of the main points of confusion. So the fee only applies if above the revenue in the last 12 months and above the lifetime game insults. Now one good news from all this is that there is no longer a limit on revenue or funding for using the free version. So Unity Personal will now be available for anyone regardless of how much revenue they make. This is a really good thing because it means that if your game makes, for example, a million bucks, you can still now stay within the free version. Whereas previously, you could only use the free version up to a revenue or funding of 100k. If you made more than that, then you would need to get Unity Plus. And if you made more than 200k, you would need to get Pro. So then down here is the chart for what the fee actually is and how it applies. Basically, you have the three tiers. So you've got Unity Personals, that's the free version, Unity Pro, and then Enterprise. Then you've got the revenue thresholds. These are all based on the last 12 months. Then you've got the installs threshold. So this is number of installs per lifetime. Then if the installs are above this amount and it's above this revenue on the last 12 months, if so, then this is the rate that is applied. So for the free version, when going above 200k installs, after that, it's 20 cents per install. Then Unity Pro, you've got 15 cents and it gets cheaper as you get more and more installs. And for emerging markets, so countries like China, India, Brazil, and so on, for these, you've got a lower install. Then there's also a fee reduction for using Unity services. There's not much detail on this, so I don't know how exactly the fee is reduced, but apparently this fee goes down if you're using Unity Gaming Services or Unity 11 Play. So this is their ad mediation thing. Again, I'm not very familiar with mobile. And then the new services, so just a bunch of tools, just clarifying some things. So all Unity plans will get Unity Synthes. This is their upcoming machine learning tool, which allows you to run machine learning directly on the device. This is related to the ML Agents package that I covered quite a while ago. Then Unity Personal will apparently get something called Unity Asset Manager. I think this is pretty much just some cloud storage. Then you've got Unity DevOps. This is related to version control and CI and CD and so on. Then build minutes for making builds in the cloud and so on. And like it says here, Unity Plus is being retired for new subscribers. You can either drop down to the free version or somehow upgrade to Pro at the cost of Plus. So basically all of this, this part is all pretty understandable. The main confusion really comes over here from the fee and the chart. Now, the reason as to why my analysis is that nothing is really changing for devs like me making PC and console games. The reason for that is because these numbers are really made for mobile. In mobile, getting 200k or a million installs, that is really pretty standard. Whereas for a premium PC or console game, selling 200,000 copies, that is a monumental mega hit. Again, keep in mind that I have no experience in mobile, so everything that I'm saying here is from the point of view of a PC on console dev. I have no idea how reasonable this fee is in the mobile world. But in the Steam world, I think it helps to think of a concrete example. So, for example, I talked a while ago about a game that was massively successful. If you have a three-man team, like the team that made Battlebit Remastered, and you were to sell 3 million copies and make $35 million, if so, then under the current terms, you really only have to pay Unity 6k per year. That's the cost of three Pro licenses. Whereas, for example, Unreal Engine has a 5% fee on gross revenue above 1 million. So on that same example, if Battlebit had been created using Unreal, they would have to pay $1.7 million instead of just 6k. And then under these new Unity terms, at 3 million copies sold, instead of paying Unity just 6k, they would instead pay 80 grand. So definitely a very big increase, but still pretty much a rounding error compared to the $35 million in revenue. But that's also an example of a monumentally successful game. For most indies, both engines really have excellent pricing. For most indies, both engines are completely free. And the simple reason is that for most indies making Steam games, this pricing change really means no change since most indies will be way under all of these numbers. I believe the stats are that 90% of games on Steam never make more than 5k. So this fee will not apply to something like 99.9% .9 of Steam games. For example, I'm working on my own upcoming Steam game within Guardians. I really hope that the game will find success, but to me success means just selling a thousand copies. Even if in my wildest dreams the game would be a huge hit and sell 10,000 copies, that is still 190,000 under this current limit. Although in my case I actually have Unity Pro, so in my case that would actually be 990,000 under the new limit. 
So my general takeaway is if you are an indie dev on the same scale as me, then it's very unlikely you will ever hit anywhere close to these thresholds. Again, keep in mind I'm talking about in the context of premium PC console games. For mobile, the math is very different. Now, right away, there's a ton of confusion on all of this. The fact that the fee is per install means there are a ton of possible weird edge cases, which are not really explained anywhere. There's an official FAQ with a bunch of questions, but there are still so many unanswered questions. The official forum thread already has hundreds of posts and lots of questions. So here, let me try to clarify some things. Although, do keep in mind that I do not work for Unity. I'm just a normal developer that uses Unity, just like you. So what I'm going to say here is based on reading the blog post very carefully, I do not have any extra secret knowledge. Now, the main thing that people are confusing is the end. It is actually highlighted up here in the text. It says that only games that meet the following thresholds qualify for the fee. So those that have above the revenue and above the lifetime insults. It is confusing because down here in the chart, it is not clear that it is and on both of these conditions. So some people think that this fee applies if you go above the revenue or above the insult threshold. That is not correct, this one is an AND. Meaning, for example, if you're using Unity Personal, then this fee will only apply if your game has 200k in lifetime insults and over 200k in revenue over the past 12 months. A lot of the confusion in the forums is people asking, what if I have an old game and someone installs do I have to pay? And the answer is you only have to pay if that old game has made over 200k in revenue in the past 12 months. If the game was super successful in the past but no longer in the present, if the game goes under that revenue threshold, then you don't have to pay any fee regardless of how many insults. Another point of confusion is people asking if this applies to their entire studio. And the answer to that is no, this is on a per game basis. Everything on the blog post is referring to a game, not a studio. So for example, if you have a huge hit and then the next game is a flop, you don't have to pay any fee for that second game, even if the huge hit is still bringing in over 200k per year. Then some people are also confused, thinking you would have to pay this fee per user per month. Meaning if the user plays your game for two months, you would have to pay two fees. And the answer is no, the fee is per install. Again, it looks confusing because the chat over here mentions a standard monthly rate. So that makes it seem like you have to pay 20 cents per install per month. That is not correct. Basically, the monthly over here has to do with when you have to pay. Basically, the invoice for the install cost is going to be invoiced on a monthly rate. But this is not the monthly cost. So every month it is going to check the revenue and the install count above the threshold, meaning how many unique installs were added in the previous month and then use that to complete the invoice. But again, this amount per install is just once per user, even if your user plays your game for the next 10 years. Then some more confusion is related to the threshold. Some people were thinking that as soon as you hit the 200k install threshold, then suddenly you have to pay 20 cents times 200k. That is not correct. If you are on the personal free license and your game generates above 200k in revenue in the past 12 months, and you sell 200,001 copy, you pay just 20 cents. The fee is per install above the threshold. It is not for all of it. Another very important question is what about free demos? Nowadays, making a free demo and participating in a Steam festival is really important to finding success. So for demos, the answer is technically yes, free demos do count. But again, the fee only happens if above the download and above the revenue threshold. So for a free demo, even if you get 200k demo downloads, since it's free, you won't have zero revenue, so it does not trigger the fee. Related to that, some people were saying that eventually a demo will become a paid game. And for that, I believe the answer is you simply make a project on the Unity dashboard for the demo and then a separate project for the final game. That way, the demo downloads do not count for the final game. Then there were also a bunch of questions for which there seems to be no clear answer. For example, how are installs tracked? If your game uses any online service, like for example, analytics or cloud diagnostics, then that's already tracked by default. But what if you're not using any online service? How exactly does that work? The answer that I got from Unity is it will attempt a simple connection to the Unity servers. And importantly, I was told that if that connection fails, it does not break the game. So this change does not force your game to be online all the time. That was my first question when I first heard this. And with regards to that simple connection, someone asked, does this break any privacy laws? Now for that, I believe the answer is no, because as far as I know, the player ID that is generated, that does not have any personally identifiable data. I believe that one is just a random hash, so I don't think it has issues with privacy, but I'm not a lawyer, so I definitely could be wrong about that. Related to that question is what about reinstalls? Say your player installs a game, then uninstalls it and plays it a year later. Is that two separate installs or just one? Like I said, I believe they are tracking installs through the player ID, which is stored in the registry. Now, I'm actually not sure if uninstalling a Steam game wipes the registry. If it does, then I believe that would count as two installs. And if it doesn't, then I believe it would just count as one install. Another question with no clear answer is what about piracy? So if someone pirates your game and plays it, does that count? I believe the answer is those installs do indeed count. 
Although, supposedly, Unity has some fraud prevention algorithm that they're already using in their ads and they will be using the same algorithm here. Although, of course, I have no idea how well that works or how much of a problem this will be. And related to that, what about simply malicious actors? So what if someone makes a script to uninstall and reinstall your game constantly? In that case, I believe the answer is yes, that would count. So technically, if your game is above the revenue threshold, then technically this could be a big problem. Basically, you have to trust that their fraud prevention algorithm is very good at detecting that. So as you can see, lots of questions, lots of confusion. I hope I helped clarify at least some of these. And hopefully the rest will become clear in the very near future. But in general, my main takeaway is just like I said in the beginning, if you're an indie dev like me, especially a Steam or console indie dev, then there's really no change. Like I mentioned in my own example, if by some miracle my own game sells over a million copies, I would gladly pay this new fee. And if you want to help me make that miracle a reality, go ahead and add Dinky Gardens to your wishlist. I'm hard at work to get the game ready for release early next month. Alright, so I hope this quick news update was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.